All right, so here we are on the keel project for sailing vessel Pegasus. I'm Jeffrey Wedig, uh, Captain Jeffrey Wedig, uh, host of the Shooting Breeze Sailing Podcast over at theescapepods.com. I think this is number five on the keel project for the updates. As you can see, I've got it all fared in and uh, barrier coated. That's about six layers of Interprotect 2000 uh, with a little fairing compound in between. Uh, you can see I do have one spot here. Uh, there was a bubble. I guess I didn't prepare it right or I didn't let it cure enough or for whatever reason it just didn't adhere to the keel. So that's the spot I'm going to have to keep an eye on. I covered it up like twice and was like, ah, it's not going to work. I had to cut it out and then with what I had left over, and you can literally see the can there, uh, over about three hours, the last day I was down, I put a bunch of stuff on there and, and it, it's so it's solid, it's adhered and uh, so it's a good repair. I just... I might fare it up a little bit. You can see our new crew member here, Tipper. Hey, Tipper. Tipper, up here. Say hi. Hey. Get down. So, uh, Tipper's now the third mate, I guess. Or maybe the ship's mascot. I'm not sure what she is. Uh, but she's acclimated to home. We've had her about two weeks. Um, did have her down on the boat over the weekend uh, while it was up on the hard. But we'll see if she's a boat dog or not. I'm not sure. She's kind of some kind of beagle mix. We're not sure what she is, so we'll see how she fares on the water. So anyway, the only other thing I got going on is uh, I was going to come down and paint today, but you can see it's really wet, rainy, and it's going to be that way for the next three days till the weekend. And I was hoping to launch on Saturday. That's probably not going to happen. Uh, maybe Sunday if I'm lucky. But what I've got to do today yet is I got to poly prep this. I washed it the other weekend. The other week I was down, it was raining, uh, so I got to poly prep it and then. Uh, maybe wash it again and then I got a poly glow so I'll have to do that on Saturday and I was going to paint the bottom but that's going to have to happen on Saturday but I also have the rudder off you can see no rudder on board Pegasus at the moment uh, it's over in the shop and uh, then I put a little bit of a repair in there come on Tipper we're going this way and uh, so I kind of ground it out and put 4200 in the spot that was uh, leaching water and of course the water just leached right out of it through the through the repair so i took it off it's over in the shed here and i'm hoping that uh because originally I, I was kind of thinking about it and it was like there's got to be water getting in from the top somewhere and there's a bunch of hardware on it where the where it hangs and so my first thought was take it off take all the hardware out rebed all the hardware and that seems like an awful lot of work when when thinking about it, I guess, uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe I developed a crack down there, maybe somebody hit something with the boat in its previous previous life or whatever, and uh, this spot opened up. There's two little spots that opened up, and I'm assuming, just from what I've been reading, that it's some kind of foam core um, with fiberglass over top. And, you know, the big thing is that that foam will just suck up whatever moisture it can get, and then... Uh, the problem is when you run into delaminating rudders is when there's moisture in there and it freezes and expands and contracts and ends up delaminating the rudder. And uh, I don't have any of that. Now, like I said, it's been leaching for like two, three years. I noticed it a couple summers ago or uh, when I pulled it out a couple uh, falls ago and uh, didn't really think anything of it. Now, of course, it's a bigger problem and I don't want to cause an even bigger problem with like delamination, but you can kind of see the... Uh, repair that I did and then these two spots I kind of dug that one out um, it's where the moisture was coming through so like I said originally I was like oh maybe it's coming in through the hardware but you know the water lines actually below here and uh, I don't think it's coming in from the top and leaching down I think it's just sponging up water while it's in the water and then it just spends all of the off season coming out so my plan for today is to uh, sand this all down, let it dry, make sure it's definitely dry. If it's going to, you know, I'm going to spin it around here. I'm going to leave, go to lunch, and come back. So if there's any moisture there when I come back in a couple hours, you know, we'll see. I don't have the time to like sit around and not do anything with it. But probably what's going to happen is when I come back, I don't see any moisture. I'm going to fill this back in, leave it upright so that the water can't come out, and then let it dry. 
and then I'll come back and sand the whole thing and, and flush it out. So, if you would like to comment and tell me what an idiot I am for doing things the way I'm doing them, feel free. Uh, I know this is probably is not the best uh, situation, but what I'm thinking is if I can get it repaired for this season, see what it's like at the end of the season, and uh, you know, go from there. Uh, there is no, like I said, major DLAM or anything like that anywhere else. There are a couple cracks up through here, but I really don't see them protruding through like the outer material. This is really heavy stuff. So uh, the only other thing I wanted to point out was my uh, leather cover here for my tiller handle. And I don't know if you've seen the tiller handle, and I, I probably can't get this off right now, but um, there's a yeah, there's a horse head kind of carved into the top here. It's kind of cool for the, for the Pegasus, I guess. Um, but the, the guy I bought the boat from, Rick, had a special handmade leather cover that he had. It was all hand-sewn leather and everything. It was really nice. Of course, it wore out in spots, and I ended up having to pitch it a couple years ago. But what I did is I went to an Amish lady up in Lancaster at Roots Market, and she sells belts and belt buckles and all kinds of leather stuff. And she actually, you know, my belt, good old $14 belt that's lasted me three years is the best belt I've ever had. And she sits there and cuts it to length and, and you know, there's all kinds of stuff they'll do for you. Uh, but this, I went to her with some drawings and some dimensions and said, I need to cover this up. And she said, okay, you know, I'll see you in two weeks. Came back, it was $40. So a $40 cover, even the canvas ones on eBay are like 50 or 60 bucks sometimes. Um, so just kind of a shout out to the local artisans uh, if you've got the opportunity on any of your boat projects to incorporate kind of local people and uh, local tradesmen, whatever. I mean, I know the guys at the boat yard need to make a living, but sometimes they're just overpriced. Uh, so maybe not for fiberglass work or actual boat work, but if you're doing canvas work and you don't want to do it yourself or kind of leather work or any kind of weird stuff like that, you know, try and just look around. There's, there's people out there in your local community that are uh, doing that kind of work. And they may not have ever thought about doing it for boats, but yeah, they always, they're always looking for biz. So, all right, that's it for uh, today at Hanson's Point Yacht Club, a soggy, wet, ugly, yeah, icky kind of day. Uh, I did post uh, a new episode just the other day with Linus Wilson from the Slow Boat Sailing Podcast. Uh, so check that out over at the Shooting the Breeze Sailing Podcast. Uh, www.theescapepods.com over on Facebook we've got a page search for the Shooting the Breeze Sailing Podcast uh, Twitter at the Escape Pods all one word I also uh, Kamau I went down to visit Kamau and do an interview with him down in Baltimore in his boat build uh, so go over to uh, Iandi Boats on YouTube I-A-N-D-I Boats at uh, YouTube and uh, he posted the first 15 minutes of our conversation on his YouTube channel uh, for his uh, his boat build down in Baltimore so uh, check us out, and thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by.